Hey, what's going on everyone? Thank you for tuning in and checking out my latest video. And in this week's video, I really want to talk about a legendary fighter, which would be Marvelous Marvin Hagler. And the reason I did this video is I really wanted to see where my fellow boxing fans would rank Marvin Hagler amongst the best middleweights of all time, and to also relive some of his very memorable fights. So getting into Marvin Hagler's career, here's a guy who had a record of 62 victories, three losses and two draws. He also had 52 of these victories via stoppage. And throughout Marvin Hagler's career, he was a guy who had this attitude and this imposing demeanor about him. Here's a guy who, against some of his opponents, he beat them so badly, one of his opponents, he broke through his jaw. And the other opponent, he actually gave the guy 40 stitches. So that goes to show you what kind of fighter Marvin Hagler was. And throughout his career, he had to fight the toughest guys to make it to the top of the sport of boxing. This is a guy who actually didn't win a title until his 54th fight. I know that's crazy for a lot of boxing fans considering nowadays you see fighters getting a title in their first fight, a title opportunity. Um, and this is a guy who really had to work very hard for it. And before we get more into his career, let's go to a bit of his background. Marvin Hagler is a guy who grew up in Newark, New Jersey eventually had to leave due to how violent it was in the area and it wasn't safe for him or his family. So he moves to Massachusetts and trained under the Petronelli brothers. And throughout his road to get to the top, he had to fight the Philadelphia middleweights. And these guys were very, very tough fighters. Uh, those are some fighters that Marvin Hagler had to beat to move up the ranks. And this is a guy, really, when you watch his fights from back in the day, he's a guy who had an excellent job, a great chin, a guy who could box and brawl, also had excellent conditioning and his defense was good and also he could move around a bit as well. Uh, people seem to forget that because towards the end of his career he didn't have the same amount of movement as he did early on. And throughout his career he had victories over such fighters as Vito Antifermo, who he had a draw with, which he actually should have won that fight, ends up defeating him again. Also he got his title win against Alan Minter. And another excellent fight that you can't forget in the career of Marvin Hagler is his war with Tommy Hearns. Tommy Hearns, an absolute great in the sport of boxing, comes from the Four Kings era. And Marvin Hagler and Tommy Hearns just had the war. Uh, some of the best three rounds of boxing you've ever seen in your life. And if you haven't seen that fight, you've got to check that out. I'll post it underneath. Just the war. These two guys went at it. And an absolute classic fight. And it goes to show you how tough Hagler is because Tommy Hearns just had a wicked power punch. This guy had so much power, it was incredible. To see Marvin Hagler hang in there and take him out while taking some of Tommy Hearns' best shots goes to show you how great of a fighter Marvin Hagler really was. Another great fight in Marvin Hagler's career was his fight against Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran is a guy who moves up from lightweight, which is a amazing feat really Roberto Duran just is another absolute legend in the sport of boxing uh, Roberto Duran was actually up in that fight but later on in the rounds Marvin Hagler came on strong and ends up defeating Roberto Duran by decision uh, very impressive victory even though Duran's coming up from such a low weight class he's really a one-of-a-kind special fighter and one of the greatest of all time as well so that was another impressive victory in the legacy of Marvin Hagler uh, another fight I really wanted to speak to you guys about, and this is a fight that actually ended up making the super fight between Sugar Ray Leonard and Marvin Hagler. Marvin Hagler goes up against John the Beast Mugabe, who's a guy with 26 victories at the time and 26 by knockout, so a very feared puncher. And throughout that fight, early on, Marvin Hagler takes some early shots from John Mugabe. And eventually in the sixth round, Marvin Hagler starts to turn it on. And it's a, just a brutal round, an excellent round to watch. And later on, Marvin Hagler actually takes John Mugabe out in late rounds. That was the fight, though, that if you watch ESPN documentary on Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Leonard saw it and saw Marvin Hagler starting to lose his ability. He was getting hit more than he had in the past. He couldn't move around as much. And that's what ultimately made Sugar Ray Leonard take this fight against Marvin Hagler. Getting into that legendary fight, there's a couple things that uh, some people don't know about it, actually that Sugar Ray Leonard actually became a friend with Marvin Hagler, so Marvin Th Hagler had thought. And Marvin Hagler had told him things like, he's just really not into the sport as much anymore, and he doesn't train as hard as he used to, and it wasn't as much of his passion anymore, as you see in the ESPN documentary. And Ray Leonard, being a smart guy that he is, 
says, well, why wouldn't I fight Marvin Hagler then? So he proceeds to fight Marvin Hagler after not really wanting to fight him earlier on in his career. And he takes a fight against him at the really the best time possible for Sugar Ray Leonard. Gets all the stipulations he wants in the fight as well. And this fight is just, uh, it's debated among boxing fans still today. I personally, when I see the fight, I see Marvin Hagler really winning a very, very close decision against Sugar Ray Leonard. I thought that Sugar Ray Leonard's strategy of his flurries at 30 seconds towards the end of the round was a really excellent and brilliant strategy that him and Angelo Dundee came up with. But I also feel that Marvin Hagler was the aggressor throughout the fight and was also the champion as well. And where it's very close like that, I don't feel that Marvin Hagler should have lost his title. I don't felt, I don't feel that Sugar Ray did enough really to win that fight, in my opinion, besides his 30-second flurries. And he did uh, have some excellent moments throughout the fight. He had a very good game plan, Sugar Ray Leonard did, so you got to compliment him there. But ultimately, I think Hagler landed the harder punches, was the aggressor, and his champion played all into his favor. And I think he wins a very, very tight decision. Uh, that one is just one debated still, like I said, among fans today. And overall, I, I finally want to give you my verdict on Marvin Hagler, where I'd rank him of all-time middleweights. I personally have Marvin Hagler as number three all-time middleweight behind Sugar Ray Leonard, or sorry, Sugar Ray Robinson and Harry Greb. I personally have Marvin Hagler number three. Here's a guy also, I forgot to mention this earlier, was a guy who could fight southpaw and orthodox and was one of the best in the history of sport at doing that. So just a very diverse fighter. A living legend in the sport of boxing. If you ever have a chance to check out what he's saying on Twitter or meet him in person, you really should because this guy is one of the true throwback fighters and a guy I have a lot of respect for. One of my favorite all-time fighters from the throwback era. And just a tough guy and a guy that if we had more of like him, fighters like him in the sport of boxing today would be a completely different place. And a living legend, so everybody respect Marvin Hagler and check him out if you're not familiar, guys. And thank you very much for tuning in this video. I really appreciate it, guys. And subscribe if you enjoyed. Thank you.